Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and uh, we're happy to have you here for our afternoon update uh, regarding the coronavirus spread and related issues. We are going a little bit early today uh, because this is the opening day of phase two, and we have a number of prominent business members from the Westchester community, from different parts of the Westchester community who are here, uh, and they're going to have a chance to uh, share some of their thoughts today as we finally start the process realistically of getting back to a, uh, a reasonable place in our society, hopefully where we're fighting the contagion effectively, but at the same time we're starting to open up business and really getting back to something closer to normal. I'm joined by our Director of Economic Development, Bridget Gibbons, who is here, and in a few minutes I'm going to introduce the Mayor of the Village of Croton on Hudson, uh, Brian Pugh, who's going to chat a little bit. As you know, every day we invite uh, some member of local government to be here to talk about some of the issues at hand. Today is Tuesday, June 9th, and uh, that date doesn't necessarily pop out of a calendar, but uh, it is the date that was established as the beginning for the Hudson Valley region to enter phase two of the reopening after the shutdown uh, created by the coronavirus outbreak. Governor Cuomo used executive, gubernatorial executive authority to uh, shut down uh, a wide range of business activities, uh, identified very early on in the month of March which business activities were considered essential, so they didn't close, but absent that, all other businesses did close, and uh, they had to reduce, we had to reduce staffing uh, and do a host of different things to try to get a handle on the contagion, which was greater in New York than in any other part of the country. And of course, New Jersey and Connecticut as partners in the tri-state area were, were along with us. Um, I'll give you, uh, as I always do, the numbers right at the top. Our, uh, our current numbers for today show the continued decline of COVID infection here in Westchester County. At the end of uh, March, the beginning of April, we hit our peak, and it was a serious peak with uh, a significant number of active cases. Two months ago today, this now being June 9th, two months ago today, April 9th, we had 11,060 active cases of COVID on 17,000 uh, individuals who tested positive. Today, instead of 11,060, we have 928 active cases. That's a huge drop. Uh, that's still plenty of people that are actively trying to work through the virus in their system. And uh, our hospitalization numbers now are down under 175 people hospitalized. The most recent number is not yesterday's number, the day before, 160. But that is an encouraging sign. Uh, in the peak, uh, we were up around 12,000 people that were hospitalized for COVID. We have tested to date, and that's really the three-month period from March, 189,138 people. So on the basis of that Westchester's a million population of a million people, that is clearly 18.9% of our population tested for COVID, almost 19%. That's a huge percentage of our population, and we, we will uh, eclipse the 20% mark and continue to go through that. The more of your population that you test, the public health professionals tell us, the better off we are trying to understand how widespread this is. And as we start the process of opening businesses, it's not merely that, uh, that the legal authority to reopen businesses occur, it's that people have confidence that they can go back to restaurants, they can go back to retail stores, they can go back to a life that they had you know, as recently as the first week of March and feel comfortable that they can do that without undue fear of the spread of the disease. That is why you know, we wear a mask except when we're speaking publicly. I don't particularly like them, but uh, they become an essential part of stopping the spread so that I don't infect anybody that's within close quarters to me. And the social distancing you see in the room, it's not because we don't like each other. It's because we realize that that distance will help us stop the spread. And everything is toward that goal because if we stop the spread, we open business. We start to have that economic engine that we need. So back to the numbers, we have tested 189,138 people. And what I think is an important comparison is uh, yesterday we tested 2,600 people and we only had 35 people test positive for COVID. That is a good sign. You have accumulative numbers that are high, 34,000, 35 people altogether that have tested positive for COVID. But in a one-day uh, uh, tracking, 35 people testing positive out of 2,600 tests is a sign that there's a decrease in the spread of the contagion. So uh, that is all very much good news. Uh, we have 1,396 uh, 1, people that have died from COVID throughout the course of this contagion. We lost one person last night, a fatality of one, one person. And that is a tragedy for that person's family. But compared to two months ago last night, 44 people. We lost 44 people on that same night two months ago. So we have made significant progress. And we're trying to deal with all the different elements of this 
I repeat something we've, we announced uh, last month when we, when we launched it, but we have a garden, Ribbons of Remembrances, at our Lenoir Preserve in Yonkers, which is one of our nature preserves. It's on a, an estate that overlooks the Hudson down in Yonkers. You see the Palisades on the other side of the Hudson River. And we've established a place where you can go. There's a little birdhouse. You pull out a purple ribbon. It's all been sanitized. You, you put a little note to remember somebody that you've lost for COVID. You can tie it around one of the trees there. You can contemplate prayer if you like and, uh, and uh, consider the, the human toll of this because that's really where this begins. This, does, this doesn't begin with opening the society and how much money we're gonna make. That's essential. We have to deal with the economic impact of this, but it begins with the loss of human lives, the people that we know, the people we love, neighbors, friends, and uh, that we, we, give them, we give them respect in their passage as we go forward to try to restore our lives. So with the numbers again, we've shown a significant progress. Right now, uh, in the totality of it, 18% of the people that we've tested for COVID have been positive. And as a percentage, that's down from two months ago when we were testing and we had 33% of the people that are positive. So by all indicators, we're reducing the, uh, the spread of the contagion. Governor Cuomo laid out a game plan well over a month ago in which there'd be a phase one entry, which we made two weeks ago today. This is now the entry to phase two. Uh, some people follow this stuff closely. Some people don't care. So what matters in phase two? What matters in phase two is that retail establishments open. We're going to hear from uh, uh, Robin Eden Bucco in a few minutes, and she operates a kid's store all together now in Mount Kisco area. Uh, that store can open. There will be restrictions. It won't be uh, quite the way it was uh, you know, before things shut down, but that's open. What we have opened in Phase 2 are outdoor seating for restaurants. That was not originally part of Phase 2. Governor added that within the last uh, week to 10 days. I always joke about this, but I'm not kidding. I have the waistline to prove that I like to go out to eat. And in a few minutes, you're going to see people from a number of different restaurants here in this area, from uh, Crabtree Kittle House, from the Rare Bit Restaurant, uh, also from River Market, Key Oyster House. I've been every single one of these restaurants, <laughs> and I've enjoyed them immensely. And now, at least at this point, the opening of the outdoor capacity for seating will allow some of us to be able to go out and do that. And I know that some of the municipal governments, uh, Brian and his colleagues in village, town, and city governments are looking at creative ways to open up public space where they can. It's not easily available for all, but to try to open up some public space so that more restaurants can have the outdoor seating so that as of today, uh, you, can, you can have a good meal outside. And then hopefully as these numbers continue to show, in two weeks when we enter phase three, then restaurants open in their entirety, both indoor and outdoor. There are capacity issues, there are service issues, things that these men and women as professionals running their businesses will know about, but all of that will, will come to pass. So uh, what I'd like to do, uh, we have a lot of people uh, to share a point of view, and it's all very important. So let me first ask uh, our Director of Economic Development, Bridget Gibbons, uh, to share a few thoughts. She has been the point person in working with the business community. She has a team working with her, including Sherry Asher, who's interacting with the various Chamber of Commerce's, Deb Novick, uh, and others in her component, Chloe Zung and uh, Corazon Pineda, and there's others. Uh, but Bridget has um, uh, been the architect of the effort that we have to try to implement that which the state has created as a set of policies. So, Bridget, please, if you would. Thank you, County Executive. I just want to mention the other businesses that are reopening as part of Phase 2. So offices, including professional services, administrative support, and other um, parts of that sector. Um, real estate, including residential property management and sales. Uh, vehicle sales, leases, rentals, etc. cetera. Uh, retail repair, uh, rental and cleaning, meaning dry cleaners. Uh, commercial building management, including um, uh, property management entities and related activities, hair salons and barber shops, but that does not include nail salons and spas and other uh, kind of auxiliary services. So we're all excited about the hair salons being open. I know I am. Um, but it does feel like quite, a, you know, an accomplishment of hitting this milestone of entering into phase two. The stay-at-home order has been hard on our businesses and, and our residents, and phase two feels like a little bit of relief. But but in this phase, we're going to be seeing a lot of movement of people. Offices are going to be filling up. Retail is, you know, uh, more active. Restaurants having outdoor dining. And we just need to make sure that we're diligent and smart. We need to wear a mask. If you go outside, wear a mask. If you go to a restaurant, wear a mask. If you go to your office, wear a mask. Um, we really just need to be diligent. And as the, New York, as the governor says, we need to be New York smart 
um, as we reopen. Otherwise, we could see some negative impacts, which we none of us want to see. So really, that's going forward. Keep Be diligent and wear that mask. Um, I just want to remind every company that is going to be reopening has to have a detailed safety plan. That safety plan, a template for the safety plan has been provided by the state, uh, and you can find that template at forward.ny.gov slash phase dash two dash industries. In addition, each uh, business that wants to reopen has to have affirmed that they have read the guidance. So you have to submit your, your contact information through a form to New York State um, indicating that you have uh, read the guidance and, and you will abide by it. And that again is at forward.ny.gov, uh, sorry, ny.gov slash phase dash two dash industry. So we, that's a requirement for every business. Um, I just want to uh, thank County Executive George Latimer for his leadership uh, throughout this crisis. He's been such an inspiration and really focused on the business community. He has empowered us and, and instructed us to do everything possible to help our businesses, both small and large, in any way we can. Um, so thank you, George, for that leadership. It's been really, really wonderful to have your support and your guidance. Part of that um, uh, leadership is the fact that we established a, a Westchester County Reopening Task Force, um, and that that's an, uh, a consists of 26 members of the business community. John Rabbits, who's here, is on is on our task force. We're meeting periodically uh, on a weekly basis to discuss what issues our business is facing as they reopen through phase one and into phase two. And we'll meet continuously to see if there are ways for the for the county to be helpful, uh, ways for us to advocate at the state or local level uh, to to alleviate any um, challenges that business might be facing. If people are interested in participating in this. Uh, task force, uh, they can contact me. At my email is bgibbons at westchestergov.com, and people can be assi will be assigned to working groups within the task force. Thank you. Thank you I don't know if I want to go out to eat or get a haircut first, but <laughs> they're both high on my list. Um, and, and as a perfect example of how Bridget and her team has operated, uh, over the weekend I had a conversation with a woman uh, who has a hair salon uh, over in the Sound Shore, and she had some questions about what she had to do. And so I connected her with Bridget, because when you, when you go through the documents, you know, they're, they're detailed, and they don't necessarily explain every possible question that you might have as a business owner. And, and this is all unprecedented. This didn't exist before. You could operate you know, making decisions that were in your own best interest. Now there's a whole list of things that you have to go through like this. So Bridget and her team has become schooled in this area. She, um, uh, she was able to convince a number of people to volunteer to be helpful in this process and be able to reach out as well to business people, help them apply for some of the federal small business loans that were out there. So Bridget's done a very good job on the ground. Uh, anybody can give a speech, but to do the actual grunt work, Bridget, we owe you a debt of gratitude and your team. So thank you. We're joined today by the mayor of uh, the village of Croton on Hudson. There are 45 local governments in Westchester County. And if you live in one side of the county, you might not know particularly much about the other side of the county. If uh, somebody said you have to go to Croton on Hudson and you didn't check your GPS right, you might head to Croton Falls, which is a very nice part of the county. But Croton Falls is nowhere near Croton on Hudson. Just like Mamaronick Village is not Mamaronick Town, is not Rye Neck, is not Rye Brook, is not Rye City or Rye Town. So the Marquis de Sade laid this all out. But in the bottom line, as we govern within these communities, each community has its responsibility to, to govern the local authority, police, fire, sanitation, snow removal, local recreation, um, and then they, they control planning and zoning responsibilities in their area. The county executive might have certain powers, but I don't have the power to tell a village mayor whether or not they should open up a street for a, uh, for a restaurant uh, to expand onto it. So when you, when you vote, and many times it's the levels of county and local government that people don't focus on. We all focus on the presidency or the major positions. In fact, people know more about the mayor of New York City than they know the mayor of the village or the, or the uh, city that they live in here in the suburbs. But it's, uh, it's important to understand that the decisions made at village hall and town hall and city hall affect your everyday life. And uh, sometimes uh, folks don't realize that, particularly if you live a life, as I did for a number of years, where you commute into the city. You get on the train every morning. You're focused on your corporate career. You travel in the country. You come home to your suburban town. It's a nice town. You don't see any problems with it. You're worrying about living your life and advancing your business. And, uh, and yet somewhere along the line, there's a Brian Pugh and a village board that are making tough decisions to try to give you a better quality of life, and in this particular case, in the village of Croton on Hudson. So, Mayor Pugh, would you come please share any of your thoughts that you'd like? 
thank you so much, uh, County Executive George Latimer. Uh, it's a great honor to be joining you all on this uh, day, uh, marking the entrance of phase two and the beginning of our return, hopefully, to normal life. Uh, I want to thank the County Executive also for his excellent leadership during this time in partnership with all the 45 local governments in Westchester County. Anytime we needed help with something, we needed masks for our first responders, something like that, uh, we would get on the phone with uh, the County Executive's office and have it that day or the next day. Um, so that's been really tremendous. Um, but as we've discussed, this is uh, when we a day where we get to look, to look forward to the return to uh, business uh, uh, under the new normal. Um, at last Monday, at last night's uh, Board of Trustees meeting, we approved uh, expanded sidewalk dining uh, to facilitate our return to uh, phase two. We are also under uh, discussions with our local departments, the police department, fire department, et cetera, EMS, uh, as to how we can uh, strategically close streets uh, to allow for pedestrianization on a temporary basis and facilitate outdoor dining as well. Uh, again, the village of Croton, just as Westchester County wants to do everything that we can uh, to help our businesses uh, get going again. Um, we really hope that this is uh, the beginning of the end uh, for the pandemic in Westchester County. And that is thanks to the uh, selflessness of thousands of uh, ordinary people, everyone that stayed home, uh, and also the many volunteers uh, who have helped uh, the communities through these tough times. Um, you know, in the village of Curtin on Hudson, we've had a very moving uh, outpouring of grassroots uh, community efforts, neighbors helping neighbors. We've had the Croton mask makers who've created uh, over 15,000 handmade, hand-sewn masks uh, for first responders or other essential workers. That was a group led by uh, Liz Poling and uh, Kamala Erskine. In addition, we've had uh, the Croton meal train, which has been doing, uh, in, my, in my view, very creatively uh, supporting local businesses by patronizing them and then delivering uh, the food that they purchased there uh, to other essential workers, such as at the Department of Public Works, Department of Sanitation, or people working at the uh, supermarkets. In addition, uh, we should, f even as we return to business uh, as uh, normal, as businesses reopen, uh, we have to recognize that uh, for better or worse, the economy will most likely not snap back immediately, and there are many people that need our help. Uh, on June 23rd, uh, we will be having a uh, mobile food pantry at the Croton Harmon train station uh, that will be organized through Feeding Westchester and the village will be providing uh, other opportunities, continue to provide other opportunities for people to volunteer and help support their neighbors. Uh, we'll be having blood drives on June 11th and June 18th, um, but I think that uh, we should all just keep up the good work, remain disciplined and help out those in need and uh, continue to work through this uh, still very challenging time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate it. That's Brian Pugh, who's mayor of the village of Croton on Hudson. Thank you for taking the time to come down and to be part of this. Um, our next speaker uh, has the uh, distinction of having served in the New York State Assembly, which is one that I have as, as well. We both managed to move on from that experience to some other things. But when I was an assemblyman, and I know uh, when he was as well, uh, we were constantly lobbied by advocates for different points of view. In fact, that would take up the bulk of the day when you're sitting in an office in Albany, and they're usually in 15-minute intervals, and it was nonstop for the days that you're in session. And you can't appreciate the diversity of how many advocates that are out there until you realize how many different issues a state legislature has, much in excess of what we do in the county level of government. So uh, throughout that period of time, uh, John Ravitz, who is now the executive vice president of uh, Business Council of Westchester, working alongside Dr. Marsha Gordon, who heads that group, um, has had a chance to know exactly what advocacy looks like. And now in his capacity today, he has been a strong advocate for the business community and all of its different permutations, large businesses, small businesses, each different industry segment. Um, we have agreed on issues. We've disagreed on issues. Uh, but the bottom line is he is there and his organization is there all the time fighting for issues that affect the business community. And you realize how important it is because for those who are in the room, we're going to hear from some of the business leaders themselves in a second. You're busy running your business. You're busy worrying about producing the product or the service uh, by which you, you have to succeed. You're busy uh, worrying about what kind of item do you want to buy, what kind of 
uh, service presentation you want to make in your facility. And you don't necessarily have time to track every government policy and what might happen, much less to make an articulate argument in behalf of that. We do have chambers of commerce in most of our communities. They provide some of that service, but a lot of what they do is, is by nature promotion of the destination of the businesses in that community <clears throat> so that you shop Mount Kisco, you shop Larchmont, you shop the River Towns and so forth. But, uh, but John Ravitz has been a, an exemplary advocate for the business community. He and the people that are with him, uh, and it's a sizable organization that he represents, have been there on issue after issue, and certainly in issues of trying to reopen uh, the, the business community of Westchester County, he and his colleagues have been there. So I want to ask uh, Business Council of Westchester Executive Vice President John Ravitz to join us uh, here on the first day of Phase 2. Thank you very much, County Executive Latimer. First, again, a thank you to you and to your team, Bridget, and others uh, for the work that you've done 24-7. Uh, one of the things that I've always admired about the County Executive uh, is that he has made it one of his priorities to consistently be transparent, open lines of communications. Uh, when he first got elected, even before he was sworn in, he made that commitment to the Business Council of Westchester, and that commitment is as strong as ever. Uh, and we need that from our leaders. So thank you for all that you have been doing in your administration. Uh, at the Business Council of Westchester, we are the county's largest business membership organization focusing on economic development and advocacy. We have over a thousand members ranging from the multi-international companies that call Westchester home to all the hospitals and universities, uh, biotech firms, professional service firms. We have 140 non-for-profits and our goal is to always remind stakeholders that non-for-profits non are economic engines. They create jobs, they bring in revenue as well as dealing with the essential services that they provide. And then we have mid-sized small business and solo entrepreneurs. And our mission, our mission has always been to help our members grow. We are in such uncharted waters now, uh, and one of the things that I have found so rewarding is to see the resiliency of our members. Uh, none of us knew what we were facing when this pandemic hit, and so many different businesses in different sectors had to pivot, had to deal with their concerns for their employees, as well as their clients and their customers. And what I think puts Westchester on the map uh, throughout the country is the ingenuity and the creativity that we've seen from our, our business leaders of all sizes in Westchester County. Um, as the county exec mentioned, uh, we formed a task force on economic recovery. Bridget sits on that task force, and we're very honored that the county exec has asked us to, Marsha Gordon and myself, to sit on his task force. Uh, the task force was, that we created was there to help the county and help the state. And what we asked our members in different sectors is to really drill down to discuss what their needs are, what their wishes are, what their wants are, what their concerns are as we go through these different phases of reopening. And we issued our first list of recommendations and issues and concerns last week. Uh, we sent them to the county executive and to the governor for their review. Hopefully it will be helpful to them. We've asked uh, our task force members to come up with their second list of recommendations. Uh, we had our second task force meeting uh, yesterday, which Bridget participated in and, and was very helpful in, in clarifying some things. Two points that came out of yesterday's task force meeting that I think we all have to be addressing and concerned about as businesses begin to reemerge in all different sizes and in different sectors is the issue of child care. Obviously, that's going to play a, a very pivotal role as employees are looking to come back to work. Are they going to be able to? And are, what employers are going to have to do to be flexible, uh, to be compassionate, but also to make sure that the work, their work product gets done. So child care is going to be one issue that all of us are going to have to come up with some ideas and solutions for. The second, again, is just uh, safety. And I think confidence for employees to feel that their employers have done what they need to do to come back to a safe workplace. And I am very, again, proud of the work that I see in businesses all over Westchester County, uh, adhering to the guidelines that the governor set forth, but also coming up with ideas and creative ideas. One of the things that I think we're all going to have to look to as we partner together is thinking outside of the box coming up with ideas, being flexible. I appreciate the mayor's comments of what he's doing to open up some streets for the restaurants. Those are the type of ideas that we're going to continue to focus on and push on, working with the county executive, working with the governor. But again, Westchester is beginning to reopen for business, and it's because of the spirit of our business leaders throughout the state that we will get through this. And again, thank you, county exec, for your leadership. Thank you very much, John. 
Uh, I'm going to take uh, the next speaker somewhat out of order. She is a, a, a business owner in Mount Kisco with an organization called All Together Now, which is a, a kids-based uh, 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 business, and uh, I'm going to have her sort of talk a little bit about her situation. I'm taking her out of order because she'll be followed by four prominent restaurateurs, and many of the issues that restaurants deal with are going to be somewhat similar, but then somewhat different, depending on them. But um, uh, Robin Eden Bucco uh, is very active in the Mount Kisco Chamber of Commerce, and uh, as a local business person, uh, she's had to deal with this uh, you know, set of uh, rules that have come down that have first shut the business down and now reopens it, but with all sorts of parameters of how to operate. And of course, if she's dealing with programs for kids, she's dealing with uh, parents, primarily moms, who are very concerned about their children's health. And uh, they're going to want to be sure that before they interact out in the society that there's the proper protections for them and their children. So I don't envy Robin's tasks, but uh, we're very happy that she's here. And please, uh, Robin, do share with us some of your experiences as a business owner going through this process. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you, County Executive George Latimer, for all of your hard work throughout this unprecedented time we've all been facing together. Um, yes, it's been a trying time for sure to can shut down your business and start homeschooling your kids. I think I speak to all the moms out there with young kids in school who have just been completely overwhelmed. Also, if you're also doing the mom job and another job, it's just, you know, overwhelming most days. But um, I think motherhood is a strong and parenthood is a strong bond. So people come together and try and help each other out, give each other creative ideas of what we could do to keep our kids thriving and happy. Um, so my husband and I run all together now. It's a family business, mom and pop to, you know, the extreme. Um, and we have done our best uh, coming back, opening today. It feels very surreal to let people walk into the store after so many days being closed. Um, we've taken our necessary precautions of cleaning multiple times a day, things like door handles, um, the, the checkout area, marking the six feet distance, putting up the plexiglass partition. Um, unfortunately, right now in our store, we have a play area that's not going to be open for kids to use. Um, and our classes that we run had been running um, are going to be on hold for a little while longer. We put everyone's safety at the top of the price. You know, nothing comes before that. So, um, but we're definitely looking forward to serving our community and our surrounding communities. Uh, the store is called All Together Now, so it does seem um, finally we can be all together now again, safely with masks on. <laughs> so, um, I just want to. Thank everyone within the Mount Kisco business community. Um, I'm surrounded by wonderful neighbors of other local business owners trying their best to make it through this tar hard time. And also the Chamber of Commerce is always outstanding. Our mayor, Gina, is fantastic to, to be um, guided by. And I think that's it. I think I hope, I hope that um, community members go out and support their small businesses that you know, we we need you to come out and shop with us and support us um, before you, you know, do that online Target order or Amazon. Please think about how you could support your, your local businesses so your downtowns don't become desolate. They stay thriving and um, make your community that much more um, enjoyable to be a part of. So thank you, everyone. And I think as Robin has highlighted, uh, there's been a lot of creativity that business leaders have had to take with their business. Um, during the two weeks prior to this, um, retail stores were able to do curbside sales, which is, you know, awkward. It's not the normal way of doing business. Yesterday I interviewed Steve Josephson from the Toy Box, a toy store down in Mamaroneck, and he talked a little bit about how he had to try to at least make some sales during the curbside situation, which is different. And uh, some, uh, some of the retailers have been able to go online, create an online presence for themselves so they could at least move some product in the same way that restaurants have had a takeout function for the last couple of weeks. But I think any of us understand that, that uh, the restaurant community in many ways drives the personality of all of our communities. Going out to eat in this generation, not just you know, my older generation, but younger generations, is very much a part of our lifestyle. And here in the suburbs, where you do have people with more discretionary income, uh, it's a much more common practice. It's also uh, you know, a matter of profit and loss, and, and I'm sure these men 
who have done this for a living know more about this than I do. My background in the hospitality industry informs me to some degree of these factors. But uh, the profit margin is such uh, in the restaurant business that you don't have a lot of, of margin to work with. And, and since the consumption of the project is on site at the product is on site at the time, uh, you really need to have a convivial environment for people to be at. It's not purchasing something and then going home with it. It's being in a location for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever that is. And uh, let's be candid, the profit margin in selling alcohol is significant. When you take out food, you rarely take out alcohol with you. You have the alcohol at home, I guess, a pack, six pack, or you have your wine at home. That's an important profit margin for restaurants. So while they have uh, you know, made it through to some degree uh, with some takeout, it's real essential for people to come and have that restaurant experience. As I mentioned, I've been at all four of these restaurants at one time or another, uh, and uh, I live uh, you know, over on the Sound Shore in, uh, in Rye, and many times with uh, colleagues of mine from around the county, I ask them, I'm coming to your area for one reason or another, where do you suggest? And they oftentimes suggest the locations that we have here now. Most recently, the next speaker, uh, we had a tourism group that came up, uh, that was an international tourism group that uh, came into Westchester County and they wanted to see some of the sites along the river uh, uh, going up a little further upstate uh, into the, and they uh, had uh, a meal at River Market Bar and Kitchen which is uh, between the train station and that beautiful river in Tarrytown. There's a whole new complex of houses, uh, townhouses down there. It's a gorgeous addition to the residential portion of the community, proximity to the train, and now with a terrific restaurant uh, down there as well. So Glenn Vogt is with us here. Uh, Glenn, tell us a little bit about uh, your experiences with River Market. Thank you very much, uh, County Executive Latimer, for inviting us here today to be um, representing all of the wonderful restaurants in Westchester County. There are a lot of them, and it's so important that um, we get open again and operating. I'd like to say that the attitude right now is cautiously optimistic. I think it's uh, very important that we go slowly. Uh, we don't want to see uh, another spike. We've done such a great job of lowering uh, that curve, and uh, we hope that uh, we continue to see that trend. I um, am from uh, River Market in Tarrytown. This is my Westchester right here because that is Sleepy Hollow, and you can walk there from our patio. We have a, um, a large patio outside River Market, and we're really grateful that we have the opportunity to open that up uh, today on such a beautiful day and uh, to slowly get things back to or to a new normal. Um, new normals are uh, sometimes difficult uh, to adjust to, but it's important that we do go slowly and understand that everyone understands that we're all going through this uh, for the first time and that there'll be some bumps along the way, but it's very important. Uh, that everyone understands that and especially in the restaurant business where there's lots of opportunity for things to go not as well as hoped and planned for um, and we uh, uh, really hope that people will come enjoy being outside on the patio and understand that we're just now getting things going um, again and uh, we're very happy to be a part of this and uh, thank everyone for, uh, for their understanding and welcome everyone back to the new normal. Appreciate uh, the opportunity. Thank you very much, County Executive. Thank you, Glenn. Um, next, we have a managing partner for the Rare Bit Restaurant, Scott Broccoli. I'm sure he's heard more than once, you know, when your last name is a... Uh, one of the products that you serve, no doubt, but an outstanding uh, place to eat, and I'm just uh, waiting to have enough time to get there back there again, too. So, Scott. Thank you, County Executive, and everybody else who's uh, put this all together and put forth all the effort. And it's so nice to be here standing in front of great restaurants where I've actually been to all of your restaurants, and I'm huge fans, and you know, to Glenn's point, I think it's we're in a wonderful restaurant community, and I can't tell you how excited I am. I, I really, the only uh, metric I can put it on my daughter is going to be 
seven years old in a few days, I might be as excited as she is about opening, about her birthday coming up. And all she wants is a scooter. Um, but the, the idea that we're going to be able to welcome people back, the idea that we're going to be able to serve our communities again. Uh, my restaurant is in Dobbs Ferry called The Rare Bit. I grew up in Dobbs Ferry. I opened up a restaurant in San Francisco called Dobbs Ferry. So obviously I'm all in on the whole Dobbs Ferry thing. And I can't thank the village of Dobbs Ferry enough for what they're doing. They have, uh, they have their board meeting tonight, and they're discussing a couple of different options, all of which I think are fantastic. I really don't care which way it goes. I'm just looking forward to finding out that tomorrow so we can make the adjustments to, to make it work for, for our, uh, you know, our benefit. Um, but most importantly, we're looking forward to having our guests back. You know, they become an extended part of our families. We see them once a week, sometimes twice a week when we're lucky, and we get to know them. We get to know their children and, you know, everything about them, and that's what's really been missing because you can't do that when you're not seeing them face-to-face. -face. It's been wonderful to see the outpouring of support um, with the takeout and delivery service we've been offering, and to be cautiously optimistic is – what we all have to do, we're making the adjustments. We're lucky, I think, in the food industry that we're already very, very cautious. We're already held to a higher standard you know, with the Board of Health. So making this adjustment isn't going to be that difficult for us because we're already hypersensitive to the issues that can occur in, um, you know, in food handling and beverage handling. So, um, yeah, we're following the guidelines from the, the city, the county, the the village of Dobbs Ferry to do whatever we have to do to stay compliant, keep everybody safe and healthy, and um, just looking forward to a wonderful summer to, to get back in business and get back to doing what we do, and that's entertaining people and making people happy, and that's what's kind of been missed of late. So uh, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it, and uh, look forward to being in all your restaurants very shortly. And, um, yeah, everyone else, please keep up the good work that you're doing, and Thank you on behalf of everybody from Dobbs Ferry and running the county and the state and as you do. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Thank you very much. We have a uh, Dobbs Ferry resident on our team here, Sherry Asher and uh, Ellen Hendricks right down the road in Hastings. So we'll make sure they, uh, they make the trip up uh, to your place. Uh, next, we have uh, one of our neighbors right down the block, Key Oyster House. And uh, L.V. Hojai is with us here. Uh, Key Oyster House is strategically located between three or four county office buildings. So hopefully uh, the fact that the county government officials are back in and we've saved our money up uh, so we can come and enjoy you for lunch and maybe for dinner too. So, L.V. Thank you. Thank you, County Executive. Uh, it's a pleasure being here with all some of the best guys in the business. I mean, you guys, the, the restaurants that are represented here are phenomenal. I've been to all of them. I lived in Westchester the majority of my life. Uh, just just, just a, a safety note, uh, the whole idea is hopefully people feel a lot more comfortable with the numbers going down. We feel a lot more confident. As those numbers head down, we do feel more confident that business will People will come out and business will grow. We cannot do it without the local support of all the residents. And uh, so we, we, we encourage people to please come out and, you know, give us some business. You know, it's, it's, it's been a while since we've been doing much. We've been about three months now, like, not doing much. It's, it's a step forward. Today is a great day. We're able to, gives us another avenue or another source of income and provides a service also for our locals. Uh, we are taking, as everybody else here, People should feel confident that we are taking all the necessary precautions for safety and any established place and the places represented here, I feel extremely confident to go to it eat. Uh, and, and that's the whole idea about people feeling more confident, being more safe, and we'll support each other, and together we'll all get through it. And we appreciate your leadership, and uh, everybody else is our neighbors, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Key Oyster House is open for business. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. you got it. Finally, we're joined by uh, John Ke Crabtree, who's the owner of uh, Crabtree Kittle House. The last time I was there, and I've been there for the Chappaqua Rotary meeting, I've been there for different events in the downstairs uh, room that's got great uh, catering facilities. Last time I was there, uh, somebody came over and, and asked me if I was the county executive, and uh, I was kind of surprised because I'm not usually recognized out in public. And uh, so I said, yeah, I'm George Latimer, and they talked to me for a few minutes, and they said, well, uh, over there is President Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. So... I guess in the scheme of things, we all have our place in the society, 
and we all know where to go when we're in that uh, Chappaqua, uh, Mount Kisco corridor. So, John, thank you very much for the fine establishment you run. And executive, thank you so much for having us all here and give us the opportunity to uh, say a few words here. As Robin said, uh, the whole situation, I think the word of the, of the, the season is surreal. Um, our season, January, February, we were chugging along. We were, we were straight, set to have the best first quarter we'd had in our 39-year history. Then, bam, it just all stopped. The mandates came down from the uh, government, stop, close down, you're done. Okay, and then the next, the next thing we know, we're getting, getting mandates, directions, uh, information. And uh, thank God we had the office of uh, this county executive here offering us clarification and information to help us maintain some sense of uh, sanity. Uh, we learned to create a new business called Curbside. Uh, we went in every day and our staff uh, jumped in there and, and seamlessly just jumped in and uh, created a new uh, system. What it was is our, our, from our chefs to our cooks to our wait staff to our hostesses, we had this system going and all of a sudden the guests, our customers, they got in the flow of it too. So everybody was, we all became one big team. It was actually kind of wonderful to see in some ways. Um, I'm looking forward to opening up completely because that just doesn't cut it for the restaurant business, as these guys all know. But uh, really, John Ravitz, thank you so much for all the information you've been giving us. Uh, because without it, that information, we can't operate and we can't become a new business. Or it's it's a new day. We're all going to be starting our new our businesses from scratch. Uh, like you say, it's 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 like starting over uh, the first day. So it's, it's nerve-wracking, it's exciting, and we can't wait to see everybody back in our, in our places. So, George, thank you so much. Thank you, Appreciate it. Happy to have you with us. Thanks. So we took a little bit of time there to make sure that everybody had a chance to share some of their experiences. <clears throat> uh, we'll be happy to go to any questions that we have uh, in the room. Do we have any questions for anyone that's called in? Okay. Very good. Well, we appreciate you taking time uh, to uh, be with us here today. Uh, the various business uh, individuals, and, and John as a business association leader, Mayor Pugh, and of course, uh, Bridget Gibbons and, and her team. We've got a long way to go. Two weeks from today, uh, if all goes well, we'll enter phase three. That will fully open restaurants, and uh, we'll wait to see exactly what other kinds of facilities will open under phase three. Uh, we're hopeful. Uh, we're working right now in other parts of our team with municipal governments to open municipal pools try to help some of the private pools and the homeowner associations and uh, wherever they may exist to get those open so people have a recreational element. We're certainly opening county pools. We have county beaches open. There's a lot to do to get this to the right place, and hopefully we'll do all of this by maintaining the, um, uh, the health uh, numbers and realities that we have to face. And then, of course, you know, we, we deal now with an issue of social justice that's very much on our, our table that we have to address. We want to address that. We want to try, certainly as people express their First Amendment right to assemble and speak, that they have that opportunity, they do it peaceably, and, uh, and that out of that we have reform. And somehow uh, we'll look back on the spring of 2020, we'll, uh, we'll be at one of these restaurants, have a beer, a glass of wine or something, and we'll remember how we all survived it somehow through that, that American sense of strength and uh, cooperation that gets us through everything. So with that, if there are no questions, we'll thank you for being here. We'll thank you for watching. Uh, tomorrow we'll have another uh, interview at 11 o'clock. We'll give an update again. Uh, hopefully the numbers will continue to be good. And if I have any recommendation for you, aside from the usual stay safe, go out, find a restaurant with a nice little outdoor patio tonight. You re reward yourself for being home for 90 days. And uh, let's help jumpstart these businesses. Have a good day.